And now, race fans, it's time for the command. Please welcome back your Grand Marshal, University of Michigan football coach. And now, race fans, it's time for the command. Please welcome back your Grand Marshal, University of Michigan football coaching great Lloyd Carr for the most famous words in motorsports. Gentlemen, start your engines. Somebody give Lloyd Carr a whistle. I think he's still got it. We're ready to race in Michigan. Back with NASCAR on TNT in a moment. Good afternoon from the Irish Hills of Michigan. NASCAR on TNT, proud to bring you round 15 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. We are 80 miles west of downtown Detroit in Brooklyn, Michigan at the Michigan International Speedway. We have cloud cover right now, temperature of 75 degrees, east wind at 10 miles per hour, and the forecast throughout the afternoon calls for a slight chance of showers. Welcome again, everyone, and happy Father's Day. We are glad you're with us for NASCAR on TNT. With Kyle Petty and Wally Dollenbach, I'm Adam Alexander. You guys are smiling, and it is hard <laughs> to wipe the smile off a driver's face when you come to this place. Why do they like it so much? It's just, it, a race car drivers love this place because you can race here. You know, you may go single file down the, down the straightaway, but you'll see these guys go four wide through the corners. There's a lot of real estate that race drivers can use. If your car's not working, you find a different line. So that's why they like it. It's a little bit of a frustrating place because you need horsepower to run well here. Uh, especially if you're running the bottom, it takes a lot of power. But the race drivers love this place. It's always a blast. So last week at Pocono, Kyle, we talked about the drivers that started deep in the field. Rows 11 and 12 today yes. have names like Kyle Busch, the Carl Edwards, who. Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick. It's going to be fun to watch them come to the yeah, front. Yeah, you've got those guys that are starting right in the middle of the pack. And then you've got guys like Jeff Burton and Brad Keselowski, a winner a couple of weeks ago, who's all the way at the back and I'm going to tell you something those guys are going to need all four lanes to work their way through traffic the other lane that gonna they're going to need to work through traffic is pit lane those guys have got to have a pit strategy that gets them back to the front and there is one guy at the start that has no issues with traffic that would be one Kurt Busch who took the pole here yesterday Coors Light the official beer of NASCAR the proud sponsor of the Coors Light pole award given to the fastest qualifier in each NASCAR Sprint Cup race and this week the Coors Light Light Pole Award goes to Kurt Busch, his third straight, and he has more than any driver this season. Now we look at the lineup. David Rudeman joining Kurt Busch on row one. Matt Kenseth, a little driver everyone talking about in practice, joins Brian Vickers on row number two. Regan Smith and Tony Stewart, a former Michigan winner in row three. Greg Biffle knows what it takes when it comes to the Irish Hills. He and Casey Kane share row four. Row five, last year's winner, Denny Hamlin, with Paul Menard looking for his first Sprint Cup Series victory. Landon Castle with a great qualifying run on row six with Martin Truex Jr. And now we visit with the pole sitter, Kurt Busch. Wally, I think you got him dialed up. Yeah, we'll give him a shot. Hey, Kurt, this is WD up in the booth. You got a copy? Bro. I don't know. Let's think with our numbers. We, we hit it pretty close every week. 4750. Strong 4750. Give another shot here. Uh, Getting a solid 4600. Hey, Kurt, this is WD up in the booth. Got a copy? 10 4, is that you, Wally? Yeah, man, you probably starting to like that number one pit stall. Uh, you have uh, you have a very fast race car and you're knocking on the door to get your win here. Uh, what do you got to do different today? Well, we're close. We've got a great setup for qualifying. We're hoping that bleeds over into this race today. It's a long 400 miles. It's a fun racetrack. I really enjoy racing here. I know I've got the best crew on pit road, the best team behind me with the Shell Pennzoil Dodge. So we'll give it our best shot. You can't expect to win. You just got to put yourself in position. Well, when do you, you know, Kurt, when do you really start thinking about this, you know, the strategy stuff? I mean, do you, do you let the halfway go through and then you start worrying about it? Do you just drive your car and try to stay out front? When does that start come into play for you guys to really look at? 
Uh, each and every run is a little different. You learn who the players are going to be, who's moving up, who's moving backwards. We just hope we stay up front all day and keep our proud double deuce up front, and we'll see how things play out towards the end. It could be four tires, could be two. It could be just a matter of scrambling at the end. You never know. All right, man. Good luck. Have fun out there today. Thanks a lot, Wally. Thanks for Coca-Cola for the in-car camera. One last trip down the pit lane. Let's begin with Marty Snyder. Well, Adam, when Matt Kenseth qualifies third, the rest of the field usually should look out. But when I talked to Jimmy Finning this morning, he said, eh, not so much. He said, honestly, I think we have a top five car. They made several changes to the 17 car this morning. He said, the one thing we need, sunshine and a hot racetrack. That's when our car will be best. Ralph? Marty, uh, just a week ago, Jeff Gordon got career win number 84, tying himself for third all-time on the win list with Bobby Allison and Daryl Waltrip. But they're not worried necessarily about just getting win number 85. They're focusing on the championship. They're 11th right now. They want to get into 10th in the points. He's won four titles, but Alan Gustafson, his crew chief, Chris Neville, has never won a championship, and he wants one bad. Well, is Dale Earnhardt Jr. ready to win? First, you have to look at what the team has done to get him in a position to win. Last year, he was 16th in points, rarely knocking on that door. This year, third in points and knocking on the door just about every weekend. Dale admits he's making a lot less mistakes in the car. The team has given him a top 10 car each weekend, and he's got great communication between he and Steve Letarte. For more on the 29, Matt Yoakum. Kevin Harvick, fresh off probation, racing today like he has all year, only going for wins, not points. The focus, though, early on, Gil Martin told me, simply keep that car safe. Starting 22nd here at Michigan, we'll see guys fan out three and four wide until they can get to about the first pit stop. Just keep the ears on the dog. Larry Mack. Well, Matt, the smoke you'll see coming from pit road will be from the engineers and from the calculators. You heard Kurt Busch talk about it. Can I make it on fuel? But the big question, when the caution flies, do I go with two tires or four tires? This will especially be huge, Adam, when we get to the closing stages of this 400-mile race. Every year, it seems to come down to fuel mileage here at Michigan. Our race analysis for this afternoon's 400-miler, 200 laps, 55 miles per hour on the pit lane. Going to be big, and you see the pit window between 36 and 40 laps. Kurt Busch, David Rudiman, a Dodge and a Toyota. Share row one. We are set to get it rolling in round 15 in 2011 in the Sprint Cup Series. Green flag in the air. We are racing at Michigan. Take him long to get three wide here. Kurt Busch in front of David Rudiman, and he grabs the top spot. And you can see how they... They're going to really, you know, the draft really comes into place at this place. You don't think it does, but it really does. You'll see these cars, you'll see a lot of drafting going on and guys working with each other or hanging guys out on the straightaway. But boy, once you get to the corner, all bets are off. Tony Stewart inside of Brian Vickers and around him for third off a of turn two. And, and that's almost a slide move. You see him just drive in the corner and slide up in front of Vickers and take that line away. Denny Hamlin serving notice. He came to play, getting around Greg Biffle for position. Look at the distinct lines as they go through the corner here at Michigan, completing lap two. Kurt Busch, the race leader. Tony's moving, passes a car for, for third, and then the next corner, he's already up to second passing the car, or trying to make a move. Two drivers that qualified well here, Matt Kenseth and Tony Stewart. They have great resumes at Michigan. They usually have to start outside the top 20. The fact that they qualified well could be a bad sign for the competition. Yeah, there's three drivers, if you, if you look at it, if you just look at the sport. Tony, Matt, and Kevin Harvick. It doesn't make any difference where they qualify, by the last 50 laps of the race, if they have a car capable of winning, they're going to find their way to the front and be able to challenge. What, Kurt Busch has just set sail. It's like he's just running, still running qualifying laps compared to everybody else right now. 
Denny Hamlin doing a nice job as well. He won this race last year, leading more than 120 laps. He's gone from 10th to 6th, and here are the guys that started back outside the top 20. Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch going at it for position. Just in front of them, you see Mark Martin, a five-time winner here, racing with Marcus Ambrose. You see these guys going to the corner. You saw Mark Martin going up on the high side and cut straight down to the bottom. Paul Menard, good qualifying run. He started ninth. And that's where he rides on track right now. That's where it feels like when you're in Menard's situation, you hit a brick wall. You know, you get a run on a guy, you pull up next to him, unless you have somebody right behind you or in front of you on that draft, it, it really feels like a parachute just went out the back of your car. It, it really does. And as, as we watch this move for second, second place, as you guys at home watch this race today, the guys that run low really make good ground getting in the corner. They can dive right past the guy. Coming off the corner, the high lane keeps the momentum up and keeps going. If you're like Tony's car and it's working like it's working right now, it appears that high or low is working this early in the race for him. And, and really, uh, uh, the reason for that, Kyle, is because you can, when you're in a low line, you drive in deeper. Yes. You drive the car in deeper. You're on the throttle longer. When you're in the high line, you let it roll out. But when you're in the high line, you pick the throttle up earlier than the guy does on the bottom. So that's why you can get in better, you know, uh, if you run the low line. But on the high line, you can get off better. And on the low line, let's be honest, you got more room to save it if it gets away Absolutely. from you. Absolutely. you got the whole <laughs> racetrack to chase it up. And, 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 you know, to run that low line, I, I think you need to have a lot of motor. The guys that have big horsepower can run that low line because you just scrub off so much speed on the bottom. And if you've got more power, a little bit more power than somebody, it definitely helps. And, 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 and again, if you're, if you're watching races on TV, now, the way we start this thing, the pole sitter can pick inside lane or outside lane, whichever lane they want once you win the pole. If you'll watch a race where the guy picks the outside lane, you know that outside lane is the faster lane most of the time during the day. And right there was a great example of a 24 was about to get passed by Harvick, and Keselowski went up there and drafted him, gave a little bit of a bump, and he actually pulled the pass off. What's up with the 29, man? Oh, Jimmy Johnson, caution on the track. First caution of the day coming out at lap seven, and it's for the five-time champion, Jimmy Johnson. That thing's got a right front flat, a left, left front, front flat, flat, a left rear flat. <laughs> yeah. He's up there in the, in the middle, and he's probably just going to lose the air because he's got somebody kind of behind him on his left rear. That's just a cl classic example of of taking the air off your, the rear of the car and spoiler. He just lost uh, grip in the rear there. And just not in a really good spot. Just in a bad spot on the yeah. racetrack. There's somebody under you, there's somebody on the outside, and there's not enough wind, not enough downforce to hold the car. AJ did a good job of steering to the right and staying off of him. You see those tires popping as he's got him locked down. On board with Kyle Busch looking back at Jimmy off of two. It's like the thing wiggled a little bit, and when he went to correct it, it had already stepped out enough. And he has to run really slow around the racetrack here to keep these tires from coming off and tearing the fenders slap off this thing. He's riding around with three flat tires. This is not a big deal at this stage of the race unless you tear the fenders off of it, and then you may be done. Yeah, and, and what they'll have to check here, as you guys noticed when the car was sliding, look at that right front. That splitter is on the ground, and the whole time he's riding around, it's like just grinding that splitter off on the right front. You begin to lose that little bit of splitter. It didn't take much. Remember, we talk about 16th on bump stops, 32nd on bump stops, to keep and adjust that thing. Come on, boys. We've got to do four. Hustle up. Hustle up. Yeah, they, they got to hustle up. Jimmy Johnson already in for his stop, and the He's rest of the drivers out. joining him. Marty? Tony Stewart had one of the fastest cars in that run very early on. They were surprised at how good the qualifying lap went, so also a little surprised how well it went. Two tires for Tony, Ralph. Marty, they're going to go up two rounds of the track farm for Brian Vickers. They wanted right side tires and fuel on the 83. That's what they've done. Half. Steve.
Steve Addington trying to control the track position, one of his keys in the beginning of the racetrack. Bar adjustment, the car free, just right side tires only. Chris? Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. saying the car is dirt track and loose into one and three, so they made a track bar adjustment in four tires. The race off pit road. Won by Kurt Busch. We're back for NASCAR on TNT in a moment. Today's green flag restarts presented by American Ethanol. American grown, American made, powering NASCAR. Ryan Newman stayed on track. He did not pit. Kurt Busch the first to leave pit road. They restart on the front row. He spun those tires. <laughs> Ryan Newman spun it. Whoa, look at that. That's almost like somebody missed a shift or something. Yeah, and it's but it's like Ryan spun the tires because he was the pole said that the 22 can't beat him back to the line. Yeah. So he has to check up and everybody behind them get four and five wide. And look at that. That's why this place is so fun to run. Yeah. To run. Taking advantage, Kurt Busch goes by off of turn two. Greg Biffle joins him. Newman follows in line in the third position. Better keep your eye on Denny Hamlin. He looks good early. And, you know, you talk about Hamlin, and there's Paul Menard down under him. Paul Menard has had some races this year that you look at and you say, there before a break or two, this is a new winner in victory lane. And, you know, he had a great race yesterday. I felt like he did in, in the nationwide race. Greg Biffle looking inside of Kurt Busch for the race lead. Into turn three. Now we should point out, unless I missed it, Jimmy Johnson is a lap down. So he's just got to hang to get the lucky dog if a caution comes out. Jimmy Johnson not the only one having early problems. David Reagan made a couple of pit stops under caution and look at Dale Jr. Well Dale Jr. had to get out of the way that 51 car castle was coming out so Jr. was avoiding that and the six just run into him a little bit and a little bit is not good here because arrow no. is so so important here I mean if you just you know Kyle was talking about 30 seconds and all those are very very small numbers but they mean a lot when it comes to running around this racetrack as far as downforce goes. And the funny part is, Wally, like you talk about pit road and you talk about that part of it, we see these guys, they come straight out of their pit box and go to the outside lane. You block on the racetrack, you block on pit road too. And that's what you're taught to do. And those guys just ran out of room. What are they saying in the 48 camp, Marty? Well, until they get a caution, Adam, it's going to be a rough going here for Jimmy Johnson. He has no front sway bar on that 48 car. They did rub it off. It did break when they went around on the flat tires coming around. So Chad Canals, you see the left side of your screen, Ron Malik, the car chief, is fabricating one to go back on the car, but they need a caution to do that. Certainly not something you can do under green or they'll go down more than one lap, but something you could fix under caution. So Jimmy Johnson will have his hands full trying to keep that 48 just off the wall for the moment for the moment yeah you're right marty because you know what i mean it, 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 the new tires will mask that for a little while the problem here with michigan is we have a tendency to go green for a long time and he can get put another lap down in no time and no time at all and we talk about the front bar they run a rear bar too larry when, when they showed a photo of the of the sway bar arm itself or showed a picture of the sway bar arm itself explain what it does when it grinds that off and how what it does to the car yeah i mean that, that's going to be huge because you've already talked about how important it is to keep that splitter nice and flat and right against the racetrack they run so soft the front springs in the front of this car that sway bar is what keeps that car nice and level He's going to feel like he's driving a car that's rolling over eight inches on the right front without that sway bar hooked up. Yeah, you're, it, again, it doesn't sound like much, but you're talking about a second or two seconds a lap slower than what it would if you had that thing hooked up. That's how much of a difference it makes on the handle of the race car. And you're hanging on to that. Yeah, and these cars aren't designed anymore to roll. They don't have a lot of body roll in them. They run a front bar, as we see the 83 and uh, of right by Beck. Ryan Vickers and Ryan Newman racing for third place. They're not designed to roll over. They've run rear bars now. We talked to Greg Biffle the other day. You try to run a solid platform, and when you lose one of those braces, which is the sway bar, an anti-sway bar, let's call it that, because that's what it is. It keeps the car from rolling, and it allows the car to roll over. Totally changes everything. Greg Biffle, no stranger to success when it comes to Michigan International Speedway. He got the lead away from Kurt Busch, and he's pulling away.
NASCAR on TNT back at Michigan where Greg Biffle is the race leader. And we remind you to log on to NASCAR.com slash TNT million. You got 30 laps left to get your picks in for today. You pick the top 10 drivers in this race in the correct finishing order and you can win up to one million dollars you have until lap 50 in this afternoon's race and if you had jimmy johnson in your original top 10 you may want to go in and make a change johnson the five-time champion bringing out the first caution of the day he is one lap down and if we stay green, it may not be long before he is two laps in arrears. And, right, and there'll be guys one lap down in front of him, so it could be a very long day for the 48. Carl Edwards, a two-time winner here, the point leader entering, has worked his way from outside the top 20 into the top 10, as has Kyle Busch. Kyle running eighth right now. Paul Menard looks very impressive. Third is where he is in the running order, Matt. And if you're debating about whether to put Paul in your Million Dollar Fan Challenge, I'd go ahead and do it, judging by what he's saying about the race car. 26 laps left, though, to the side. He says the car, a tick on the free side. They went right side tires only, which should help tighten the race car up. But also the sun has really come out. That should make the racetrack even slicker. And here's Brian Vickers. He's also been good at Michigan over the years. And Wally, you'd like to see him win. You could go two for two. You had Gordon last week. I told you. And you picked Vickers today. I'm out of here. I'd never have to see you again. <laughs> Going to Vegas. Going to Vegas, baby. <laughs> Going to Vegas. It'd be a blessing for Kyle and I both. <laughs> and everyone involved. <laughs> now, I mean, hey, you know what? This He runs good here. Got He's got some uh, really good results at this racetrack. A.J. Allmendinger, not one of his favorites. Right now in the 10th uh, position, in the 11th spot, excuse me, and right behind him, Denny Hamlin, who won this race a year ago. David Rudiman is there, and they're closing on Carl Edwards. You know, it, it was interesting the other day sitting, talking to Biffle, where, and, and Biffle said that we don't do a good job, meaning in the media and sitting here in this booth, of explaining to the fans and the fans that are listening that there's something happening every lap that you're catching the guy in front of you you look in the mirror the guy in front of you is catching catching you whatever it may be that every single lap these guys run are different they may all look the same and it may all look like they're all running together um, but they're all there's there's something happening every lap and he talks about how exciting this racetrack is for him because yellow, there's so many groups. yellow turn three watch for him Second caution of the day. Ooh, Jimmy Johnson's going to be very happy about that. He is, because Regan Smith, who was running right in front of the race leader, Greg Biffle, he stayed on the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson will receive the free pass, and this caution coming out because Robbie Gordon in the seven popped the wall. Oh, he's, got a, he's got a left front tire down. That's why he uh, whacked the wall. See the damage on the right side of his Dodge, and, and did a good job because that's really not a lot of damage to one of these cars. As you, these are pretty tough old race cars. The the new car that they run. So good, not only when you look at the scoring situation of Jimmy Johnson, he gets on the lead lap, but now they get the caution and they can work on this race car. For more on that, we go down to Larry at our Toyota Torque Car. Adam, I want to follow up on the Jimmy Johnson situation with the front sway bar, the front anti-roll bar. It's hooked to the left front like I'm showing here, and it's hooked to the right front. And this bar goes through a tube, and you can see it's spline. What they're going to have to do is they're going to have to take this heim joint loose because it hooks to this A-arm right here and take the arm off the sway bar. But the problem is it's splined and it's timed. That's what's going to take a lot of time. It's going to be very borderline doing that without losing another lap. And, and that is tough because, as Larry said, it's, it's timed. And what he means by time is there's almost a key where there's a lot of little ridges in it, but there's one area that has to go in the same place every single time. So when they throw that bar up there, they've got to pull it off. They, when they throw that bar up there to hook it up, they have to make sure everything's in the right place. 
They're on pit road. Marty Snyder. Matt Kenseth hits pit road very early. It's funny. On Friday, the car was too tight. Today, it's a little bit too loose. They're going to do air pressure and also the wedge adjustment, trying to tighten that car back up, Ralph. Sliding the right front a little bit, but outside of that, Craig Bimple really likes the balance of the number 16, so they're just going to put four tires of fuel on him, Matt Yoga. Instead of your screen, Cole and Kurt Busch, as the car has significantly gotten loose, so they're going to back up the track bar adjustment they made on that first stop. Go four tires and an air pressure change, Chris. Well, Ryan Newman qualified 13. He's worked his way up into the top 10, but right now he's saying the car is tight all the way through. They're going to take half a round of wedge out of the car, four tires and fuel. Greg Biffle, the leader when the caution came out. Four tires, the pit crew delivers. He's the first off the pit lane. Vickers up a couple of positions. Back in Michigan, Jimmy Johnson made repairs to his race car, but it took another lap to do so. He is two lap this down in 43rd. The restart coming is we put lap 30 on the board. Greg Biffle, Brian Vicker starting out front, and here comes Kurt Busch again. But you see how that high line on these restarts, they load it off in the corner, just as Wally said earlier. Pick up the gas so much quicker, and they just get it, just rocket down yeah. the back stretch. I hate it when somebody gets underneath you and puts you in the middle on the restart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Worst in the world. <laughs> a couple guys I'm watching right here is like, oh, I'm dumb on the bottom. Nope, I'm in the middle. Brian Vickers started up front and stayed there, and right behind him, a driver on the move, Kyle Busch, and his teammate, Denny Hamlin, stepping out of line, going for a position inside of Martin Truex Jr. I mean, that's just that's horsepower right there that 18 car just that's just those guys have some motor and you see he jets off in the corner but that 83 car wants to come back on the outside but the Ooh. thing is just free enough that he has to work it up off the corner talk about kyle bush and denny hamlin they look good today and joey logano their teammate started at the rear of the field today because of an engine change here on friday only 10 laps in practice this weekend and he has worked his way into the top 15. And, and some stuff happened the other day in practice for people that didn't watch it. Joey Logano actually got in Denny Hamlin's car and ran some laps. Denny said, I'm close enough. I feel like my car is pretty good. Come over and get in my car, Joey. See what the racetrack's like here at the end of practice. That's the advantage sometimes of having a teammate. Joey had trouble in the first practice, had trouble in the second practice, missed a lot of practice, like as you said. The one advantage is he does have he ran the nationwide race yesterday, so he's got laps on the racetrack, knows where the racetrack is. And time now to check in on the AT&T Fastest Pit Crew Award. Here's a look at the standings following last week's race. Tony Stewart in front of Kevin Harvick, Paul Menard, and Jeff Gordon. Fans, AT&T wants to know what you think. Text the car number for the pit crew you think will average the least amount of time on pit road today to 234-567. AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network, is getting faster with 4G. Last time Dale Earnhardt Jr. won a race right here at Michigan in the 88 car. Not bad. Up to 11th as he goes around David Rudiman. And you know, when you run that bottom groove like we just saw Junior come up off the corner and go all the way out and to the wall, you need the whole racetrack to run that bottom groove. And what I mean by the whole racetrack is that last 10 or 15 feet of the wall. When you come off under somebody and have to pinch it just a little bit, it's, it blows you away, doesn't it, Wally? Yeah. On how much it slows you down down the straight. And, and if you have somebody up on the outside of you, you, you actually, most of the time, you have to lift yes. because the car is sliding up towards that wall anyway. And in order to stop the car from sliding towards the wall or into the car beside you, you have to roll out of your throttle, which kills your momentum on the straightaway. And Junior got a good run going in three on the 14 car. And you see the, t the 14 car, Tony Stewart, right there. Tony just checked up, let Junior go. No one that's running two by two down the straightaways, as long as these straightaways are, it it's going to kill both of them. Yep. Junior now inside the top ten. Running five positions behind Brian Vickers, who's enjoying a very good day today. Ryan Pemberton, his crew chief, is mic'd up. Let's give you a little inside tracks. Nice job, girls. 
Nice job, girls. Hey, showing off. It's Canada. He's, it's his hometown, in front of his hometown crowd. For that, this, you do it for the hometown, the Canadians. What's that? You do it for the hometown Canadians. That's good stuff right there because that's not talking on the radio. That's him actually talking to his team off the radio, so the driver's not here. And, and just patting his guys on the back and, and cheering them up and keeping them happy. And this just gives you a good indication how how the car is working for Vickers and giving actually a lot of wheel there, a lot more wheel than I, th I think Bimble was up earlier when he was up front. I mean, Brian's car is working good. He's, he's using the low line right now, or he has been. He's going to get passed on the bottom here. But he has been running the low line just about every single lap. So he may start searching around and see if the car works better somewhere else. And really, we've run seven or eight laps on this set of tires since the last restart. So it's time for their tires to start going away enough that they need to search. What are they saying in the 83 camp right now, Ralph? Brian's been saying on the radio that he tends to start off tight on a run, and then as he gets deeper into it, the car tends to come back around to him. And remember, he got Red Bull their first points-paying victory right here at Michigan. 38 laps in, and Ryan Newman and Vickers, two former Michigan winners, going at it for a position inside the top five. They're racing for fifth and lurking right behind Mr. Michigan himself, Carl Edwards, right now in the seventh position. Right about 9,200 RPMs, he's turning this thing down at the end of the straightaway. Right there, you see the tachometer right there. Not off the throttle very long around this racetrack. You just hear me get out of it, let the car roll a little bit, maybe a little bit of braking, and then you're right back on the gas. Vickers today started this race in the fourth position. Qualifying right behind him in fifth, Regan Smith. He had an issue on pit road with Dave Blaney in the opening cycle of pit stops, and Regan trying to battle his way back. He's now scored 26, 11 seconds behind the race leader. A tough break for this team. I just want to go back to that shot. Just as we were going off that shot, you saw Brian Vickers grab and, and turn a knob. And what that was was his brake bias. So he's changing his brake bias because that little bit of a brake that he's hitting going to the corner, he's trying to help whatever the car is doing. So if it's a little bit tight, if it's pushing, he's probably putting more rear brake in it, which is going to help the car turn a little bit. Greg Biffle, he doesn't need any help. His advantage, 1.1 seconds over the field. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series rolling through the Irish Hills of Michigan. Greg Biffle, the race leader, 44 laps in. Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, the top five. And it's time now for the KFC Trivia Quiz. Who won the first cup points race at Michigan? It took place June 15th, 1969. <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. 1969. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle, for helping out. I'm just helping you, man. And, and we don't need your help on the answer right now. Okay, I know. Matt Kenseth, inside of Kurt Busch, we give you the answer to our KFC trivia quiz later in the show. Talked earlier about the fact that Matt Kenseth qualified great here, so he would be a threat. Now, Roush Fenway car is running 1-2. Biffle leading, Kenseth second, and not too far behind. Their point leader, the point leader and teammate, Carl Edwards, Chris. Well, in the pre-race show, we talked about Carl Edwards dealing with tire issues on Thursday. Took a look at the tires that came off the car on that last caution, and all those tires looked good. That left front did not look like there was any chunking on the outer shoulder like we saw on Friday. Carl's saying right now the car a little bit too free, but not a big deal. So Bob Osborne not making too many adjustments with that car. But Carl is already sizing up his competition. We heard him talk about it just a couple laps ago. The 29 is using the apron over there, left side below the yellow line. It runs like a bear around the bottom here, so we'll see what happens. The last driver to sweep a weekend here in Michigan, winning a nationwide race on Saturday and a cup race on Sunday. Carl Edwards did it three years ago, and 
Of course, yesterday afternoon, he beat his teammate, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., in nationwide competition here at Michigan. And he's talking about using the apron. And why they're doing that, there's actually a lot of grip on the apron. If you run down like you go down in the corner and you get down underneath that white line. But it doesn't stay there all day. You can get away with it for a little while, but the more you run on it, the more you take that grip away. And then you got to move back up eventually anyway. Yeah, but that's the, and you said it in the opening, and, and we're watching it right here. That's the best part about this, this racetrack. You can run in a place, and it goes away. You just go find your another place to run. Now, you may not be as fast, but you can find a comfortable place to run. And that's why this race is a funny race. You get guys that will check out, just like we're seeing Biffle here at the beginning. But by the end of the race, there may be somebody else who's found a better group. You saw the numbers on the Roush Fenway organization right behind Carl Edwards, Dale Earnhardt Jr. up to sixth. He's been impressive, Chris. Yeah, early on we heard Dale say that the car was just dirt track and loose around here, so Steve Letarte made some changes on that first caution. In the second run, Dale ran for about 10 laps, said the car was pretty good, but then it started getting really loose again, so Steve Letarte said, be patient, buddy, we have 175 laps to go. On that next caution, came in, made some big wedge adjustments. Now Dale's saying the car is pretty tight, but as you can see, he's run it up to six, so that car might be tight, but it's fast. And we'll see how things progress. We are halfway through a fuel run. Greg Biffle leading at Michigan in search of his third win at the track. NASCAR.com's ultimate tailgating vehicle is presented in part by Coors Light. Go to NASCAR.com slash UTV and enter for a chance to win this tricked out tailgate machine and find out where it will travel this summer. Visit NASCAR.com slash UTV and get started. I saw it yesterday. It is as advertised. An impressive it machine. Is. Hey, you were living in it for a while, weren't you? Yeah. I may still be living in it tonight. You know what I mean? I may, I may just go straight. Look, three refrigerators, couple of refrigerators, couple of taps, three TVs, plasma screen TVs, nice little bathroom, nice three little Three plasma screen TVs. Yes. They got it going on, dude. Yeah. Very nice. You can watch it. Oh, you can watch. You can watch not only the cup race, you can watch the ARCA race on it. I'm in. I'm in, too. So the fans have voted at NASCAR.com slash power rankings, and today's Pizza Hut fan favorite driver is Dale Earnhardt Jr., and we will keep an eye on the 88 all afternoon long. And for all you Dale Jr. fans, he was great early in the run, worked his way to sixth after starting outside the top ten today. But while we were away, Brian Vickers drove by. The 88 currently scored in the seventh position. And the bottom line is, if you're going to be good at Michigan, you have to have it, not on the short run, on the long run. Uh, more on the long runs, I mean, because I, you run so long under green flags here. So you want your car to be really, really good on that last ten laps before a pit stop. And, and I'm not sure that he's, I'm not sure he's dropping back or if he's looking for another line. He's been running so low, and now he's moved to the top. How about a new leader? Matt Kenseth was reeling in his teammate, and now he has gone by. Greg Biffle kicked back to second. Kenseth, the new man out front, Marty. Yes, indeed, and he did ask uh, Greg Biffle on the radio, can I lead a lap? And then the spotter, Mike Callanall, said, just pass him and lead a lap anyway. I think the 17, a little bit faster here in this section of the run than Matt Kenseth, but you, or than Greg Biffle, but you'll see him maybe give the lead back here to his teammate. He sure did. Give Nothing like teamwork and bonus points, right? Matt goes up and gets a point for leading a lap, and now he settles back into the second position. A win would go a long way for Greg Biffle today. Biffle with a victory would put himself in a much better position when you look at the chase standings. He enters today's race 14th without a victory. And Ralph? Well, there was another reason why Biffle wanted him to go around as well. He had a little trash on the grill, and so by getting Kenseth around the front, changes that airflow in the front of the car, helps kind of suck that paper out of there. And as you guys know, Wally and Kyle, there can be a lot of trash floating in the air here in Michigan. Yeah, it, it, it hasn't been as bad as we've seen in the past here at Michigan, I mean, but you're right, Ralph. I mean, it almost looks like there's confetti on the racetrack sometimes at this race. And there's not much openings anyway, so if you get anything that blocks that radiator, your, your temperature will fly up. 
It's been a while since these drivers have been on pit road. Try 30 laps. They'll likely be pitting under green when we return. Green flag pit stops underway at Michigan. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. No change in the last stop for Kyle Busch. He felt like they might have lost the handle of the racetrack as it continued to change. Air pressure change on this stop. The car was both tight and loose. Busch the elder, his brother. The double deuce. His car extremely tight. Air pressure change for Busch. Ralph? Uh, the 24 Jeff Gordon was very, very loose. So they make a big chassis adjustment to him. Four tires and fuel. And he'll be back at it underway. Marty. Now, Ralph McKenzie said his car was much better, just a little bit loose on that run. It'll be a very small air pressure adjustment. Ran second for much of that run, but did lead the one lap when he ran his, when he ran his teammate, Ralph. Marty, it's just one round in the left rear chassis adjustment on the 16. That's the only adjustment they're making to the car outside of four tires and fuel, Chris. Carl Edwards still saying the car just a little bit tight, but not big changes down here. Just a small air tight, air pressure change, four tires and fuel. 88, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Steve Letarte was hoping to stretch it to lap 67, but they came in early. That car still a little bit tight, just making an air pressure change. Teams were on pit road under caution at lap 28, and this cycle of green flag pit stops began at lap 60. Well, this is, I get a good read on what you are using this last run. It's probably the best gauge that they've seen as far as what they need on fuel mileage. Yeah, and, and it's today. Yeah. Today, it is. You know, I think you all come into a race thinking, this is what I can do, this is what I can get. We've seen guys run and lead, as we see the 18 and, and the 17 race here, right behind. And the 18 had a great pit stop to make up that much ground on these guys. How so many times have we seen that yeah, this year? He is a great driver on his in-lap and his out-lap to be able to make up that time in that space. Not necessarily on pit road all, always, but the pit crew is always there and always solid. But Kyle Busch gets in and out as good as anybody else on the lap, on the racetrack. Not necessarily on pit road. Not saying he's speeding. That's not what I'm saying but he does a good job. The lead for Greg Biffle prior to the pit stops was three tenths of a second. And as you can see, that advantage is gone. Kenseth and Kyle Busch both right there. Kyle sneaking around Matt Kenseth for the runner up spot. This is something we saw here a lot a year ago. You guys battling for position and it may change lap after lap, but you just can't get away from people here. Yeah, <clears throat> but Kyle's car looks like it, out of these three cars, his car looks like it's the best working everywhere. Where a couple of these guys are running this, they got to find a spot. Kyle can run in the bottom, he can run in the top, he can run right in the middle. I mean, his car right now, I think, is handling better than any anybody up front. He picked up a half a second in that cycle of stops, as you see here. Right side, even. A little quicker on the left side and also on the jack, and that's why Kyle Busch has worked his way into second in the running order. Yeah, but like Kyle said, a lot of, it has to do with cone to cone. Yes. You know, getting to the cone at pit entrance, and then once you get to the cone when you leave is getting back up to speed. That's where the time is made. Yeah, and when, and what I mean by that, and for, for people, if you time the guy when he crosses the start-finish line, he runs around the racetrack green, comes down pit road, pits, goes back out and comes back to the green flag, or back to the start finish line. That's an in and out lap, and that's where Kyle Busch is golden. Ralph? You know, a lot of that first quarter, the race also, guys, was about just finding out what the other guys were doing. The conversations were going back and forth on the radio with Greg Biffle. He wanted to know a lot of where the other guys were running, how they were doing on the stopwatch. That also played out with crew chief Greg Irwin, who before the previous stop said, you know what, we've learned from our mistakes in the past. Let's not make any big adjustments to the car. Let's put four tires on her for the first time and see what she does. So that first fourth of the race was a lot of data acquisition, if you will, for the brains of the crew chief and the driver. Now they kind of have a bit of an idea of what they got and what they can play with, and they also know a little bit more about their competition as well. And the other thing that may help them in that category today, we've got a lot of cloud coverage. So yeah. the, the track should stay fairly consistent, right. which always helps. Yes, it does, because when the sun comes out of this place, you lose grip. I mean, you may have been running the bottom line, but when that sun comes out, 
you may start at the bottom, but you're up against a wall just because the car is sliding that much. Yeah, and you know, when you're chasing the car and the competitors and the sun, you're in trouble. You know, you take one of those out a little bit sometimes, and it helps the clear. And it helps the total day. I think the sun being in really helps these guys. Greg Biffle goes around David Gillen, putting him a lap down. So it's Father's Day on TNT tonight. Join the resistance from executive producer Steven Spielberg and DreamWorks Television, Falling Skies, a two-hour season premiere tonight, 9, 8 central, only on TNT. If Steven Spielberg is involved, you know it will be good. He can't have taken a, take a look. He drives the car in deep. Now, if he can slide up there, he would have pulled off the pass with on the 18. But see, now the 18's making a run. He still may be able to squeeze in there. Yep, he does it. And I'll tell you, that's another guy as far as what you were talking about, what Kyle Busch is good at, Kyle, as far as getting in and, and getting back up to speed. If Kenseth is one of the best, too. Yes, he that. is. Yes, he is. And it's deceptive. You don't notice it until you get everybody back out on the racetrack, okay. and you're like, after oh pit stops. Where'd yeah. that guy come from? Yeah. And they go around the lap car of Mike Bliss, who right now is 31st, Marty. And guys, Jimmy Finney just radioed in that Kenseth. We did not get it full on the last stop. Get all you can get right now. Matt, not very happy in the race car, but certainly pushing the button a little bit harder to get as much ground as he can here early in the run because they will have to stop early. And that's compounded by the fact that the Fords don't get great fuel mileage in the first place. So they'll have to stop really short on the next stop for the 17. And, and that's just something today, guys, that they're going to, if they have to take an extra second or two, and you watch the reaction, he knows he didn't get enough fuel in that car. If you've got to take an extra second or two today, it's as important as it was last weekend yes. at Pocono. You know, you give it up now because if you have to come back in because you've shortchanged yourself, Larry, you have just messed your whole race up. But you know, it's amazing. I watched the same thing happen to Matt Kenseth and his crew when he won Texas two or three months ago. But here's what will happen. They will short pit because they have to pit for fuel. They'll get those four fresh tires and they're going to call everyone else's hands. Everyone else will have to come down pit road and short pit because you're going to be given almost two seconds a lap up to those fresh tires. Saw the same thing happen at Texas back in the spring. Those tires have fallen off this much here to, uh, at this racetrack, Larry? They, they are falling off quite a bit. I think that's the reason that we're seeing people not even think about going with just two tires. Four tires, caution no matter what. Well, when Matt Kenseth makes his next pit stop, he may be doing it from the race lead. He drove around his teammate like he was tied to a post. Kenseth out front at Michigan. Matt Kenseth not worried about the car being full of fuel. He has stretched his lead now to four tenths of a second over second place Greg Biffle. Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, Carl Edwards inside the top five and now we take an inside look at what's happening now in the nascar sprint cup series brought to you by sprint and evo 4g america's first 4g phone biggest mover today brad keselowski started 41st he's up 23 positions and looking good and then you have his teammate kurt bush impressive today started on the pole and he's got the fastest lap of the race how about 186 miles per hour and some change. For more NASCAR stats, live in-car audio, check out NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile and the Evo only from Sprint at Sprint.com slash speed. Matt Yoakum. Every 10 laps, Adam, the weather changes going from cloud cover to direct sunlight, causing frustration for pole sitter Kurt Busch. Every run, his car has been drastically different and he just summed up his day so far on track and in the pits. Our car is always junk on green flag stops, plus slow pit stops, it's not helping. Well, I'll tell you, I hope the sun doesn't really come out because then he's really going to think, he, I mean, you know, it's coming out, but it <clears throat> hasn't stayed out for very long. <clears throat> the car looks like it's awfully loose right there. Watch him in the last lap. Brian Vickers, good qualifying run today, and a credit to Ryan Pemberton, Brian, and that whole team. They have stayed in the top ten. Vickers scored eighth right now and going around Dale Earnhardt Jr. for seventh, and Kevin Harvick coming with him. Every time there's a caution, every time there's a green flag stop, that 29 moves up. Two, one. 
one or two positions right in that area. And, and I mean, this has been their MO for the last two years. We haven't even talked about Kevin except from pre-race, and he just hovered around 21 or 22. Pit stop under that first caution really moved him up about 10 or 12 positions. There were four guys we talked about prior to the race that started outside the top 20. Harvick, one of them, and as we just documented, he's inside the top 10. Carl Edwards up there in fifth. Kyle Busch has worked his way to third. And the only one of that group that has not been able to make any movement, Jimmy Johnson, an early spin for the defending series champ. Right now he's 36, two laps down. Yeah, it's going to be a long day for Jimmy. I don't think he's going to make be able to make that one up. There's too many other guys going to lap down right now. Fans want more TNT coverage? The Coca-Cola in-car camera on Race Buddy lets you ride shotgun with the Coca-Cola racing family of drivers. Check it out on NASCAR.com's Race Buddy now. You're riding here with Greg Biffle. If you haven't been on Race Buddy, you owe it to yourself to check it out. Just flip up the laptop while you're watching the race here on TNT. And it is a whole new experience. It is. It's pretty incredible, all the information that they're showing. You find it all at NASCAR.com. This season got off to an electric start for Trevor Bain, winning the Daytona 500. Back in a cup car for the first time since April, and welcome back. And, and you know that he come up off the corner, not knowing where the 33 was, tried to keep it pinched down, jumps a little sideways on him, and he has to chase it back up the racetrack. But, I, I mean, that's what you do. When you come up off these corners, you have to turn a little bit more, especially Still coming out of four. Still the front, Bain two. See Bain in 26th. And there's Joey Logano going by on the inside. Talk about two distinct different lines in the corner. You saw it right there. And there you see the 20 car is so much better through the corner, but can't, does not have enough power to get up off it the It looked like the 21 it. practically stopped up yeah, there in the high line. Exactly. He just got on the throttle and went around the outside like this guy. Matt Kenseth leading the race. He's pulled away. His advantage 2.3 seconds over the runner-up, which was Greg Biffle, but... Now it's Kyle Busch on the outside. Kyle's car looks awfully good. So we've completed 83 of 200 laps at Michigan. And Matt Kenseth likes what is happening. He is out front this afternoon. under caution for the third time today and here is the reason why Brad Keselowski a winner a couple of weeks ago and check out the tire Ooh. oh man wow what a how lucky is that right in yeah. front of our camera I know that's not man you just saw that little puff <laughs> Keselowski was running in the 18th position and you see big time damage for the blue deuce yeah you look at that damage compared to like Robbie Gordon's damage earlier. Yes. That's normally how you hit a wall when you cut a tire here in Michigan. The leaders did make pit stops under caution. Let's update what happened. Starting with Marty Snyder. Adam Caution came out at a very good time for Matt Kenseth, who was about eight laps from a green flag pit stop for having that fuel not get all, all the way full on the last time. But he went from first to eighth on the stop thanks to a 17.5 second stop. He said the car a little bit too tight. Quarter pound out of the right front and up on the track bar as well, Ralph. As far as the 16 to Greg Biffle is going, they are surprised by the high quality of fuel mileage that they're getting. It's better than they've seen in some testing runs, but they're also getting very good grip. They added a little small piece of tape to the car as well because their temperatures are only up to 215. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is twice now, the left front tire has seen some chunking. Matt Yoakum. Now the sun is back out, the track getting slicker per Kyle Busch. Slight air pressure change. They shuffle pressures in the back, trying to get his race car tighter. He'll restart second, Chris. Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Just as the caution came out, Carl Edwards said, hey, I think I've got a left rear tire coming down. As he came down pit lane, that left rear was definitely flat, but he said the car is really good. Slight wedge adjustment, also one pound of air in a good left rear tire. Larry? 
Well, I was watching Matt Kenseth's pit stop that time, and we know he came in running right at the front, and he fell all the way back to ninth. If you compare him to his teammate, Greg Biffle, I saw a lot of trouble on the right front. Three and a half seconds, and that's what's cost him from basically going from the lead almost outside the top ten back in ninth. And, Larry, he's not the only one that had problems. Dale Earnhardt Jr. running inside the top ten. Lost 11 spots, and he is now 19th. Larry, here is Matt on pit road a moment ago. Yeah, this is Justin Nottestad, the, the front tire changer. And you'll see right there, he's going to drop a lug nut, and he had to pick it back up and put it on there because you can't leave your pit box until all five lug nuts are in contact. You can see the frustration on Jimmy Finney, the crew chief. That's two stops in a row, not full of fuel a while ago, and now big troubles on the right front. But they got a fast race car. So the bad news, you've had issues. The good news, you're still in the top ten, Wally. Yeah, it, it's just it's frustrating when you give those spots away on, on pit lane because it's so hard to pass guys on the racetrack. Yeah. You know, you don't really ask anything from your crew other than just don't lose me any spots. Yeah. I don't care about gaining spots. Just exactly. don't lose any spots. I know you guys are excited about what's coming next week. NASCAR, NASCAR on TNT heading out west to Sonoma. Coverage begins 2 p.m. Eastern time with Countdown to Green delivered by Pizza Hut followed by the Toyota Save Mark 350. And now we answer today's KFC trivia quiz. The question, who won the first cup points race in Michigan? June 15th, 1969, Kyle. The answer... Who is it? See, I, I, I know even the way he asked it. Who is it? It's gotta be Richard. He's now a Kale Hall Yarbrough. of Famer. Kel Yarbrough. Oh, Kel Yarbrough. I didn't know, it. I didn't his, know that. I don't know. Yes. One of his eight Well, that was your time, here. Kyle. That was my time. I was just, I, I just turned like 60 around that, right around that period of time. I'm like 100 now. And, and, and you know what? That one of the first races they run up here, they tried to run a 600 miler. I want you to think about that. Greg Biffle, the Incredible. race leader. Incredible. As we get set for the restart here, green goes in the air as we come back. Come inside, Outside is whoa! Ah, was loose. Oh, that outside is definitely the lane to start if you're if you're leading. You ever wonder why cautions breed cautions? It's because guys drive like this on the restarts. Yeah, and we saw Vickers almost as he come up out of the corner get into the side of, of Menard, and you see he went from about fifth or sixth in line back to about ten because he just had to check up. guys to keep your eye on Kyle Busch who was very fast under green prior to the pit stops you see him closing in on Greg Biffle the race leader Matt Kenseth who was also good prior to the caution coming out but lost those positions on pit road and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is outside the top 15 here's Kyle Busch both those cars a little twitchy up off the corner you saw the the 16 that get a little tail happy there and the the 18 kind of push up of Kyle Busch You know, on new tires, when we go to that in-car shot right there, you really hear the guys roll out and go back to the gas, as Wally said earlier, really fast. And, and they're pretty much wide open right here. You're out of the gas right there. You see Kyle roll to the bottom, picks it up, and he's basically wide open when he gets back into it because they're on fresh tires. We'll go back to this shot a little later, hopefully in, in the race or in this run, and you'll hear him start rolling out a lot sooner and feathering, feathering, feathering until they get it up off the corner. He, you know, he's back in the gas before he gets to the halfway point of the corner. He, he gets back in the gas and gets on the gas and makes the fuel or makes the gas and the steering wheel turn the car. He's just a little bit of brake, just enough to set the nose. So Greg Biffle leading this race, Kyle Busch second, 
older brother Kurt, the pole sitter today, running in the third spot. And we go back outside the top ten. Martin Truex Jr. racing with Brian Vickers and Denny Hamlin for 13th. Now you hear him, you heard him get in and go, wah, wah, like that. He, he didn't go back to the gas as hard as Kyle was being able, as Kyle's car was able to go back to the fuel. Wow. Casey Kane working over Kevin Harvick here. This inside the top ten, the battle for sixth. And Casey had both left side tires down below that white line on the flat that Wally talked about earlier having so much grip. But as he started up off the corner, the thing broke loose and went into a four-wheel slide. And Menard catches him down the front stretch. Now, if we were at Daytona or Talladega, you couldn't advance a position while running below the line. Outside of Daytona or Talladega, the line means nothing. I don't think he was completely below the line. No, he just had a couple tires. <laughs> but he wasn't advancing his position be, either, so yeah. that wasn't... <laughs> If he was completely below the white line right there, he'd be crashing. <laughs> Paul Menard still in the top ten, enjoying a nice afternoon. See Carl Edwards, the point leader, just in front of him right now in the eighth position. Haven't heard much from Mark Martin today. He's in the top ten. Yeah, and, and you talk about Carl Edwards and Casey Kane and, and Paul Menard right here in this. This is where these guys have kind of stalled so far. They've been they've been the consistent runners in this area, just as we've seen the 17 of Matt Kenseth. We go back to the 16 of Greg Biffle and the 18 of Kyle Busch. Those guys have been the best cars. Now, obviously, the 17 of Matt Kenseth had a little trouble, but he's back in fifth position. But new to the top five is Amendinger and some of these guys, and they're hanging on right now. Kyle Busch looked like he was going to get the lead early on the restart, but it's still Greg Biffle out front. Welcome back to Michigan. 99 laps into this race. We've got a battle for the lead right now. Greg Biffle continues to lead this race. He has led a total of 68 laps this afternoon, but I'll tell you what, he has Kyle Busch breathing down his neck right now. Busch has climbed 22 spots. Larry Mack, I want to say that one guy we have not talked about is Jeff Gordon, who is still all the way back at 23rd, even though he started 31st. After talking to him in our pre-race show, you would think that he thought he was going to be a lot higher, didn't he? Well, I really did. Right now, though, I see Kyle Busch taking the lead from Greg Biff from that 16 car. Remember, this is a track that Kyle Busch has never won on in the Sprint Cup Series. But back to Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. I did not feel that good about him when he qualified back in the 31st position. Here you see him racing Joy Logano. He's sitting there outside the top 20. And this is a guy that has 36 starts here. And half of those starts, he finished in the top five. I don't think he's going to get his 85th win here today, though. I would say that Hendrick Motorsports night might not be having the best day that they want to go home with, guys. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Larry. Saw Jeff Gordon dirt tracking it off the corner. Kyle Busch not only got around Greg Biffle, but his advantage two tenths of a second last time around. And as they cross the stripe here, the lead for Kyle nearly a half a second. Kurt Busch continues in third. Matt Kenseth in fourth. And what about A.J. Allmendinger in the top five? A driver that got off to such a good start in 2011. Needs something good to happen. And they've been impressive here so far today. And, and another Ford with Richard Petty Motorsports. This part of that Roush group and, and that contingent, really, when you look at it, that's three Fords. And, and I don't think in our, in our production meetings and some of the things that any of us thought the Fords were going to be as strong as what they are today. I, I, I know I didn't. I, I really felt like that the mile and a half and the mile racetracks had begun to match their forte and, and their engine combination, their aero package, their chassis setup. Uh, they're the surprise to me so far in this race. Kyle Busch started 24th. He's got the lead at the halfway point. Matt, what are they saying? Adam, a driver's cockpit. It's a controlled environment where the littlest thing can take away focus and caution on the stopwatch. Kyle Busch battling not one, but two issues. Ask, ask for the eighth man because I need a bag of ice and I need some sort of cloth with the liquid to clean my visor. My visor is killed because I threw water out that had water in it. Okay, 10 
the second issue right before the last pit stop Kyle reported to the team he was not feeling well some kind of indigestion Scott Riggs did make a stop by the team's pit he could be the guy to get in the race car if Kyle Busch would have to get out but Wally and KP you're leading the race your best race ever you've had so far in Michigan I don't see him getting out <laughs> no he ain't gonna get out the, the bag ice will help a lot it, what you do is you if you can get your belts loose and you unzip your uniform you put the bag of ice on your chest or over your heart and it actually th that was always worked really really i know we have all these air blowers and all this stuff but a bag of ice brings down your body temperature better than anything that i've ever found kyle and, and i think that'll help a lot yeah and you know but the, but the interesting part is remember last week we talked to kyle bush and he said my Hans collar, it's really yeah, hard to un we asked that. It's yeah. really hard to unzip my yeah. uniform and get that ice down in there. And when we talk about un loosening your seat belts and doing all this stuff, we're talking people under caution when you come down pit road. This yeah. is not something he's going to do under a green flag stop, but he does need some type of relief obviously, and he must not be feeling well. He's not feeling good about his advantage over second place Greg Biffle either. It is down at 2 tenths of a second as you watch behind them. Carl Edwards in six. That's Kevin Harvick and Mark Martin right behind. Also should mention Matt Kenseth. Had those problems on pit road. Restarted eighth. He's worked his way back to fourth. What about Mark Martin, Marty? Tell you what, it's been a pretty good day for Mark Martin. A few uh, runs ago, he was running 24th. Now he's up in the eighth position. The last three stops, Adam, they have made no changes to that car. Mark says it starts to run a little bit loose, and then he gets tight towards the end of the run. But he's very happy with the balance of that five car, slowly making his way to the front, proving he can get to the front and pass guys. His old teammate trying to pass somebody. Greg Biffle all over Kyle Busch. Put lap 106 complete on the board this time by. And the advantage for Kyle under two tenths of a second. Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth, A.J. Allmendinger make up the top five here at Michigan. Kyle Busch, the race leader. Nearly a half a second advantage over Greg Biffle, and here we are again, Larry, another green flag run. Yeah, I would say we will see some drivers hitting pit road in the next six to eight to ten laps, but regardless, it's still going to be a two-stop race. I think we're going to have to get to lap 130 before you can actually feel halfway comfortable that you can make it on one stop from there. And that's figuring right now going about 35 laps a run, which honestly for some of these drivers I think is still borderline. A.J. Allmendinger continues his climb, was running fifth, but around Kurt Busch, he's now fourth. Time now for us to update you on what's happening throughout the field. We go through the field, brought to you by McDonald's. We begin with Matt Yoakum. And when you look at the importance of this run here at Michigan this day for Kyle Busch, look back to the past four races. He didn't finish better than 13th. Very solid run in the pits as well. He said the car was a little freer earlier, and he hasn't mentioned anything more about his health. Now, well, things are really good for Greg Biffle right now. Even though he's running in second, he's very happy with the car. Just plodding along right now. They're getting excellent fuel mileage. They think they got something for the late stages of this race, Marty. In this run, Matt Kenseth has gone from eighth to third, Ralph, and he told his guys after he came off pit road, we have to pick it up. We cannot afford to have another bad stop. When I talked to Matt about this weekend, he said, you look at the next three weeks, we must capitalize this week. Next week, it's my worst track, Daytona. You don't know what's going to happen, Chris. Well, A.J. Elmendinger has only had three top ten runs this year, so he's looking for a good run today. And in fourth, he's got a strong run going. But they did drop a lug nut on pit lane early in the race, so he lost a lot of position. He's made it all the way back up to fourth. He's happy with the car, but he's looking for it to rotate a little bit more in the middle so they can make a track bar adjustment on this next stop. Matt? Kurt Busch looking to capitalize on his pole here at MIS. The car, every run, has gotten freer and freer. Now he says the car is as loose and has been all day. He just cannot lean on that right rear. Steve Addington looking at some significant adjustments on the next stop, Chris. 
Well, we saw all kinds of problems with that left front tire on Friday for Carl Edwards, but nothing today. Every time I check those tires when they come off the car, that left front looks good, where I've seen other tires up on pit, down pit lane that have had some chunks missing. Carl Edwards saying all day long the car is pretty good, making small adjustments. Matt? And the guy who runs the Richard Petty Davis Luke Pearson line the most here at Michigan, the 29 of Kevin Harvick. Loves to rear right up by the fence. The car, this run, way too free. Gil Martin looking at a track bar adjustment, possibly air pressure on the next stop, which is closing in. Marty? Matt, when I talked to Mark Martin about this weekend, he described it as a reset weekend. He said the last few weekends, we've kind of dialed ourselves out. We came here just like Jeff Gordon this weekend and started basing our setup off of what they were doing. Just past Casey Kane for eighth position. Car just a little bit too tight, Ralph. Well, Casey Kane wants to bring the track bar up, but he also wants to get an air pressure adjustment to help that car gain some grip. Car number four, Casey Kane. Chris, looking for a little more grip. Ryan Newman running 10th right now. He's just been pretty much saying all day that the car has been a little bit tight. He's been trying different lines, but he says as he works his way up the racetrack towards the wall, the car just keeps getting tighter. So they're going to make a couple more adjustments on this next stop. Larry? Chris, I've been watching Denny Hamlin in the 11 car who qualified back in the 10th position. Now we're looking at Joey Logano, his teammate, who's back in 23rd. But Denny Hamlin, another racetrack that they had circled on their calendar because if you go back to last year with Denny Hamlin, he won here a year ago. He finished second in August. Right now he's sitting back there in the 12th position. The irony is Kyle Busch and the 18 team look to the 11 team for help at Pocono and for help at Michigan. Kyle Busch finished third last week. Oh, by the way, he's leading here now. It's good to have teammates. And Kyle Busch taking the knowledge and putting it to good use. His lead now over Greg Biffle. A little bit larger than a second. Matt Kenseth, 2.6 seconds behind in third. Almondinger and Kurt Busch make up the top five. The last time the leaders came down pit road at lap 85 and a cycle of green flag pit stops beginning. David Rudum in the first to hit pit road. Jamie McMurray will join him there under green. These stops at lap 117. If you want to know who struggles in the fuel mileage category, you see who are the first cars to make pit stops in a green flag cycle. These two are the first ones we saw in our first green flag trip earlier. This is, this is where you want to be. You want to, you don't want to be messing with anybody or have anybody messing with you. Have a bit on your back. You've got all the clean air you want. So you actually, you actually really start to back off a little bit here. You don't have to drive as hard. Kyle's just doing what he wants to do right now. Top 10 a week ago, led a bunch of laps. Juan Pablo Montoya. Oh, no that's such luck today. Good. Wow, close <laughs> to the wall. Yeah, they're gonna have, when they get that jack around the other side, we'll see if there's enough clearance there. Yep. Montoya hey, running outside the top 25 when he peeled off the track to make his green flag pit stop. The first of that lead bunch making his, A.J. Allmendinger, Chris. Yeah, and A.J. Allmendinger has said he's been able to keep up with Matt Kenseth down in one and two, but he's losing ground in three and four, so they're going to make a track bar adjustment and try and get this car to rotate a little bit more in three and four. Four tires and fuel. Ralph? Four tires and fuel, small chassis adjustment for the nine. They also took a tear off off the windshield. Marcus Ambrose cleaned the grill. He's away. Matt Kenseth in in front of Marty. Yes, and he pits in the third position. He's at the car just a little bit too loose at the beginning of the run. Matt did remind everybody, make sure we get it full. Four tires, no changes, Ralph. Greg Biffle is in. They're taking a tear off off the front windshield for his number 16 machine. Four tires of fuel. They are extremely happy with this car. Now just watching for the 83, making his adjustments, waiting for him to come. They're going to do a quick chassis adjustment to him as well and send him back out. 83 guys got to get their car better on a run after, right after a pit stop. They lose way too much time the first 10 laps of a run. Yeah, and that's exactly. The first five or 10 laps of the run is where he needs to be moving forward, not just maintaining. But he's not even maintaining in these first five or six laps or 10 laps. He's falling a little bit. 
Casey Kane running inside the top 10 will make his pit stop at lap 121, Ralph. Casey Kane is in as well. They go around to the right side. They're also going to make a chassis adjustment on this car. They do that. Take care of the left side tires as well. Pull him full of fuel and send him back underway. Kyle Busch, the race leader. He's led 23 laps today. And he will come down pit road here at lap 122. Brother Kurt also on pit road. Carl Edwards and Mark Martin are in. And a penalty for Martin Truex Jr., a missing lug nut as he made his stop. Let's follow the leader, Matt. And Kyle Busch slides to a stop in his pit box, feeling better after a water bottle. This man Addison is in at the last stop. The car a little too edgy everywhere. Chassis adjustment, Chris. Well, Carl Edwards has pretty much just been saying all day that the car is really nice. Small adjustments. They're going to make a little wedge adjustment, a little bit of air pressure. Carl Edwards down and away. Matt? And our post-center feels like they need to take a bigger swing at it. Steve Addington, air pressure and a significant chassis adjustment to try to get some tightness in this race car. That was Addington's big concern going in. Two free. Kevin Arvick had stayed on the racetrack and had picked up the lead until now. He comes down to make a stop at lap 124. Matt? And the winner here last August, Kevin Harvick, into his pit box. This time, four tires. They're going to make a slight track bar adjustment. Expected on this 29 machine. Don't see it in the window yet. Meanwhile, the 11 at Denny Hamlin. First and second here one year ago. Air pressure change and track bar adjustment already completed for Hamlin. His race car way too free on that last run. He's away. Paul Menard had picked up the race lead, but he too will now give it up to make a green flag pit stop. Lap 124 going on the board as the 27 Menard Chevrolet makes his way down the pit lane. Matt, let's follow him in. And Paul Menard loves the way his car on exit has great drive off, but he needs it to turn more through the center. Says it's just too slick on the bottom, makes the car too free, has had to migrate up to the middle to the high line here at MIS. Air pressure change on this 27 and a clean windshield, Ralph. Oh, the two of Brad Keselowski comes sliding into his pit box, smoking the tires. They got to back him up to get the right side up in the air. They're going to make a chassis adjustment on the left side of the car as well. Things not going well on this stop for the two car. The jack goes under. Chassis adjustments made. Watching the fuel tires going on now. Bigger chassis adjustments, and away he goes. Wow, that was a wild stop for Brad. See the damage from earlier in the race when he hit the wall, and here a wild ride on the pit lane. Yeah, I, th I think he just got in way too quick, man. He was just, I, I don't know if he didn't see his pit box. And you know, Wally, it, it's, I know this is no excuse for any of this, but this is an asphalt pit road and a concrete pit box. And sometimes, man, when you go from one to the other, <laughs> cars will take off. When the cycle of green flag stops began, it was Kyle Busch leading. He continues out front. Time now to take an inside look at what's happening now in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by Sprint and Evo 4G, America's first 4G phone. Best speed of the day turned in by our race leader, Kyle Busch. How about 213 miles per hour on the gauge? And Greg Biffle dominated early. He's led more laps than anyone. 68 circuits around this two-mile oval here at the Michigan International Speedway. For more NASCAR stats and live in-car audio, check out NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile and the Evo only from Sprint at NASCAR at Sprint.com slash speed. Edwards takes a spot from A.J. Almendinger. He was wearing him out there for a while. I think A.J. went, all right, take it. Let me see what you have. You just don't want to spend a whole lot of time racing like that right now because you can lose so much ground. A little bit of a different motto today for the 99 team. It seems to me when they go to a racetrack and they have the most success, dominate practice, qualify right up front, and they're out there all day long. Today they've been kind of laying in the weeds. Carl didn't 
didn't blow anybody away in qualifying, but he's consistently gotten that car better, and here he is in the top five late in the race. And, and you know, David Reagan back there in 17th. I mean, there, four cars inside the top 20, and, you know, David's had a little mishap on pit road, had a little mishap in practice the other day, uh, but they, they were one of the fastest cars, and, the, and the, the original practice here on Friday thought they had a shot at the pole. We all know how special this place is to Jack Roush. He certainly had one delivered to him nicely yesterday by Carl Edwards. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., a runner-up, making it a 1-2 finish. And as you saw, the Roush guys are good here again today. Don't forget, fans, you can win up to a million dollars if you go on to NASCAR.com slash TNT Million and enter the Million Dollar Fan Challenge. Each week, NASCAR on TNT is on the air. You pick the top 10 drivers in correct finishing order, and you could win up to $1 million. Again, go to NASCAR.com slash TNT Million. Kurt Busch on the pole today for the third consecutive race. Right now, the double deuce scored in the ninth position. He's been on a roll lately, so let's eavesdrop a little bit here and hear what he had to say. I'm so pissed off right now, I can't see straight. You and me both, man. If we put it around the way again, it get loose as hell. Oh, it's Kurt Owen and Bill Stone on the radio. It's always entertaining. It's always entertaining with Kurt Busch. I, I, I don't care. You know, you know, and, and you know, it, the funny part is, it, and, and it comes across a lot of times, is just being a horse's rear end. But he wants to win so flippin' bad. I, I mean, he, he just can't control himself sometimes. And, and, you know, a minute ago he said he had one of the worst cars on the racetrack and he's running third at the time. You know what I mean? But in his mind, it's not perfect. And those guys strive. He strives for it to be perfect. Uh, you know, it's 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 always, as Wally said, always an adventure with this crowd. We learned day one. With Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch, there is one place you want to finish at a racetrack. Only one. And it's out front. Right now, Kyle is there. Welcome back. 144 laps in here at Michigan. Your leader currently Kyle Busch. He has led 44 laps this afternoon, but I'll tell you what, he's got a lot of Fords that he's looking at right behind and breathing down his neck. Larry Mack, we talk about fuel strategy so much in this race, but you're not just looking at those Roush Fords, are you? Well, I'm really not. And, and yeah, I look right now, we've got four Fords in the top six. And of course, Ford is only won one race out of the last seven. But there's about four or five drivers that I'm going to keep a close watch on. Here's the story I want to set. We had a caution on lap 85, and everyone pitted there. When I look at three of the children's cars, including Kevin Harvick in the 29, who's right now running in the eighth position, I'm going to also throw in, though, the children's group. I'm going to throw Denny Hamlin in the 11 car that's running in the 10th spot. We're looking at him right now. Also, Paul Menard in the 27 car, who is running in the 11th spot. This last run, those drivers ran about 38 laps. If we see them, which would also include Clint Boyer in the 33, if we see them go to lap 161 or 162, I think they're going to try to make this race on one more stop. I'd keep a close watch, and that's only about 14 or 15 laps from now. Larry Mack, you're talking about Denny Hamlin, currently 11th in points, but if you look back at Ford, they've got the most wins at MIS, 31 total. They haven't won here, though, in the last four Michigan races, Adam. Certainly a track you think of when it uh, comes to Michigan and the Ford manufacturer, and they have delivered big time today and won here in nationwide competition yesterday. And while the last... 35 laps or so has been dominated by Kyle Busch. You cannot ignore the man who is right behind him. Matt Kenseth is fast. Next Sunday, NASCAR on TNT goes west to Sonoma. Coverage begins at 2 p.m. Eastern time with Countdown to Green delivered by Pizza Hut. It's followed by the Toyota Save Mark 350 right here on TNT. Right. Kenseth is coming. Making up a lot of ground. Hi, Kyle, right there. He just seems the last part of a run. He just seems he comes on, to yeah. come on, come on, those last 10 or 15 laps. We talk about Vickers struggling the first 10. 
Matt's one of the fastest cars on the racetrack the last year. And a struggle for David Rudiman as well. He's in the garage, Marty. Well, qualifying went well. They started second today, but not the end of the day that they wanted. They will get back out. But the problem is that he was driving along. At the end of every straightaway, he would lose fuel pressure. This is a spec engine from TRD. They brought one last week to Pocono. Clearly, it delivered a lot of horsepower this week at Michigan. But problems here in the race, losing fuel pressure. They're going to change the carburetor. Also, the cable from the fuel pump trying to get this issue corrected for David Rudiman now. David Rudiman won top 10 this season. It has not been a good year for the guys that are a part of that double zero team. Kyle Busch, the race leader, only a half a second in front of Matt Kenseth. We may have a battle for the lead when we return. When we told you when we returned to Michigan, we would likely have a battle for the race lead, and it was on until Matt Kenseth pulls off the banking and makes a green flag pit stop. It comes at lap 154. And Greg Biffle right behind him. Go with the 17, Marty. Adam stopping here. They cannot make it on one stop. Several teams think they can make it on one more stop, but clearly Matt Kenseth very fast. Feels like he gives up too much at the beginning of a run. Half pound on the both front tires, Ralph. They're going to take a little wedge out of Greg Biffle's car, working on the left rear. He said, I need these front tires to turn if we're going to win this race today. Four tires of fuel. Fuel's in. He's away. Kenseth and Biffle had last come down pit road at lap 120. They pit here at lap 154. That's 34 laps. And big issues for Casey Kane, who has reported he is out of gas. He's on pit road, Ralph. Casey Kane trying to limp his way into his pit stall. Crew right there. Gas can goes in. Casey was asking for a few chassis adjustments to the car, but the big thing is going to be the fuel right now. Can they get enough in? They got it right there. They got the little can of beef right there. Trying to get some fuel, more fuel into the car. They've got it also up in the front in case it stalls on him. Waiting to see. Down he goes. Will it leave on his own power? They're going to have problems with this car stalling. You see oh, that? this is a long stop. Yeah, really this, long stop. It, when you run out like that, you're, you're toast because you can't get these things running again. Yeah, and this is this is a little squirt bottle full of fuel. What they do, they bleed this back down and it fills up the bowls oh, of the carburetor. Oh, when this thing runs out of gas completely, it runs the carburetor out of gas. There is no no fuel left. Put it in gear, rock it back and forth on the starter. Look no. at this. The clock now the starter keeps won't on work. Turn it over now. There. Yeah, finally. But but even when you start it, it'll die. It'll and die. then you got to restart. And you got air in the line. Because the carburetor's full of fuel, <laughs> the line's empty of fuel, yeah. and the tank's full of fuel. All so right, you'll get shots. you'll get that you'll get that where it just surges like that. But what they have to do is they refill the carburetor, get the engine working, get the pump working, and, and it runs strictly off the carburetor until it catches up. And you saw he couldn't get it cranked, so they had to pop it in gear, rock it back and forth to re-engage the starter on the flywheel and on the starter ring to make sure the teeth were engaged, and then it fired up. Kane was running inside the top 10, and here comes his teammate, Ralph. Here comes Brian Vickers into his pit stall. Him and his crew actually learned how to do the high act on the trapeze earlier this week in New York City. Right now, it's gonna be a dance in the pit box. In goes the fuel can. Chassis adjustment getting set to be made on the right rear as well. They're way down on the end of the fuel here, too. This car had stalled. He got it fired back up. Vickers way up in the RPMs right now, trying to keep this thing revved up. Left side tires gone. He's going to heat the hides when he leaves here for sure. There it goes as the caution comes out. And it's for Juan Pablo Montoya, who appeared to be coming down pit road, couldn't get it woed down, and hit the infield grass. Caution number four today. Also, the 71 car of Andy Lally's involved in that. And I don't know if one of them was pitting and the All other right, one didn't guys, see it. Watch your water cam. How's your water cam? Yeah, Lally's got a lot of a lot of damage on the front of that car. He's got a lot of front end damage. I, I and Montoya I, I, I has rear end damage. Somebody was probably coming to the pits, and somebody wasn't ready for it. Maybe. Yeah. See. Wow. Yep. We saw that the other day in practice when when the six car David Reagan run up on the 31 car. The 31 car got real loose and checked up right in about the same place, and the closure rate was so great. I'm not sure. He's, he's, he's slowing down almost I, like he's out of gas. Out of gas. It's yeah. almost like Montoya ran out of gas because you wouldn't expect to be in the high lane and come into pit road. And I don't think I don't expect that from 
from Juan Pablo yeah. to be up there. It's almost like when he got to that point, he ran out of gas, and the closure weight rate was so great, Andy just ran up on him. So what does this do to the strategy king, Larry? Well, it's still right there on the brink of being able to make it to the end. But when I do look at the Ford camp, like Matt Kenseth and Greg Biffle in particular, I think we'll have to find out. I think Greg Biffle will get the free pass. Matt Kenseth is on the lead lap. It's th This gives them an opportunity to come to pit road and pack that thing full of Sunoco race fuel and maybe make it to the end. Honestly, I think when we get one to go at the end of this caution, we may see a lot of drivers hit pit road to top it off. This is right there, just on the edge of the window. And, and just put a cap on this. He definitely ran out of fuel, and that's what, what, what caused that, because they had to push him into his pit stall. You and it see appears, the guy you know, leaning over with the, the bottle there. It appears if you look at the scoring monitor, and we've gotten confirmation now, that Greg Biffle is the first car one lap down. So he will get back on the lead lap. And Matt Kenseth, as Larry pointed out, also hit pitted under green, but he stayed on the lead lap in that cycle of green flag pit stops. He scored 14th, Biffle right now 18th. Kyle Busch, the race leader. We start our pit coverage with Marty Snyder. Mark Martin in fourth. They can make it all the way. I just confirmed that with Lance McGrew. They're going to undo the adjustments they did last time on this car, get back to where it was in the middle part of the race where they were making no adjustments on the car. Mark, very happy with it. A little too loose to start. Chris? Carl Edwards says, if anything, the car is just a little bit loose off, so they're going to make an air pressure change. And Bob Osborne said, hey, we've been stretching fuel since the last stop, so guys, make sure you pack it with fuel. You've got to really pack the thing. Matt? And the situation falls into place for both Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. Both were looking to pit at lap 161. Air pressure change for Kyle Busch. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick, his car wrecking loose. His car much better in the clouds. A number of adjustments for the 29. Matt Kenseth comes down, tops off the fuel tank. That's right. He already had tires, and he and, and wins spent the battle a, off pit road. And spent a little extra time packing fuel in that thing. You want to make sure you got it. We're under caution for the fourth time today at Michigan. Time for another AT&T Fastest Pit Crew update. We take a look at the teams that have spent the least amount of time on pit road today and compare them to... How you, the fans, have voted. Ryan Newman at the top. Denny Hamlin, Paul Menard, Kurt Busch also fast today. Get updated standings as soon as the checkered flag flies. Use your AT&T phone and text the car number you think will be quickest today to 234-567. When prompted, reply OK to receive updates. The AT&T Fastest Pit Crew Award brought to you by AT&T. Marty? Andy Lally and Juan Montoya in a wreck. What happened? Uh, I heard just before I got out of the car, they told me that he ran out of gas. So maybe he ran out of gas and then jumped on the brakes to try and make pit lane because we were right about the entrance right there. Uh, I was just back to throttle. I was loose off as it was. And as soon as I saw him checking up, I, tr I tried to get on the binders and, and, uh, and try to get out of the way. But there was no way I was changing direction there. It was unfortunate. TRG, these guys have been working really hard. We got interstate moving services on the car. Uh, it's just a shame. You know, we weren't having a great day as it was, but then... This, uh, this doesn't make it that much better. Thanks, Andy. Adam. Time now for today's Pizza Hut favorite driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., back in the 17th position, but he is on the lead lap. In fact, we now have 24 cars on the lead lap. Six of those took the wave around under this caution. And you see Greg Biffle here. He received the free pass, made a pit stop, got four tires. He will restart in the 18th position. Matt Kenseth, no tires, filled it with fuel. He and Kyle Busch on the front row as we get the restart. 163 going on the board here at Michigan. 31 knew he had a problem yeah. right there. Yeah. He had already pulled down in the middle of the corner and didn't want to be in Junior's way and be in the rest of the pack way. Oh, that looks good. Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Newman, Kyle Busch, all a part of the mix off of turn four. It's Carl Edwards who grabs the race lead. And, and this is go time right now. You've got to get everything you can at this point, especially when your tires are good. That's a big move by Menard right there. He came all the way across. Denny tried to block. Yeah, I think and he, he just, just he, lost it. Yeah. Yeah, he it got on down in there, but it's such a bad angle to get into the corner when you're that low. Haven't heard a lot from Tony Stewart today, but the race is on the line, and here comes Smoke. Don't 
And we got some reports from Marty during the break that the 17 is about four laps short on fuel. With where we where we ended up. He pitted at the same time these guys. He didn't take tires because he had already been down pit road. So he went from 13th to the lead, but you're saying he can't make fuel. He can't make it, can't make it right now. He here. cannot make it from here. So he's got nothing to lose by just going out and just blasting away from these guys if he can. Because obviously they're saying we're not going to be able to save four, four laps of fuel. And his teammate Greg Biffle was on a similar situation. Ralph? Yeah, Richie Craig Irwin says they're about one lap short, but he told Greg Biffle, you've got to race. Don't worry about saving right now. So they, they only ask you to save when you're in the lead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> here all of a sudden in the top 10 is Jeff Gordon. We hadn't talked about him all day. He's been back there about 22nd, 23rd, 20th, somewhere hovering around in there. This last round of pit stops has mixed up this top 10 or 15. Well, you got Clint Boyer just outside the top 10. Paul Menard fourth. That's as good as he's been since the early stages of the race. And, you know, Denny Hamlin won this race last year. And when he went to victory lane last June, he dominated. He hasn't dominated today, but he certainly is where he needs to be late in the race to make it happen. You see, you got Kyle Busch there in seventh spot right now. And these cars handle a lot different when you're around other cars. It's different when you're out front. All, when you're out front, boy, you're a rocket ship. But now that he's in traffic, it's a lot harder to make up that track position. Exactly. We talked to Kyle Busch last week before the race, and he was talking about Charlotte and the spin that he had at Charlotte. And he said, you know, I was good when I was second, third, or fourth. When I got caught back 18th or 19th, couldn't pass anybody, couldn't do anything, felt like I had to carry to ca carry the car, and I just overdrove, and it got away from me. Now he's back in traffic here. 34, now 33 laps remaining at Michigan. Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin, Matt Kenseth, your top three. Carl Edwards leading, 29 yes. laps to go here at Michigan. Denny Hamlin second, Matt Kenseth third, Paul Menard. In the fourth position, Tony Stewart just went around teammate Ryan Newman for fifth and Kyle Busch getting aggressive. Yeah, this, this is a little bit of frustration on Kyle's part. You know, he pretty much was out front running the show. Now all of a sudden he's got to pass guys and it's not so easy. See Tony Stewart right in front of him. NASCAR fans, you voted at Sprint.com slash speed and said you want to ride shotgun with smoke. Time to go on board via the Evo cam. in-car audio and real-time stats available on NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile in the HTC Evo 4G only from Sprint at Sprint.com slash speed. Carl Edwards leading Denny Hamlin by a half a second. Larry, we got 27 to go. You're our crew chief. What are you thinking? Well, here's what I want to break down on the top three as we watch Carl Edwards in the 99 car. I watched him run 35 laps and 37 laps on two different occasions on green flag pit stops. Now we know we pitted with 40 to go. We got the restart with 37 to go. If he's, he was able to save fuel under the caution before we got the restart, Mike can make it. But if he can't, I think the driver in the catbird seat is Denny Hamlin in that 11 car. I watched him run 38 laps earlier and I think he can make it, but Marty, I think you've already talked about Matt Kenseth in the 17 and third being four laps shy. And earlier he was right on the bumper of Denny Hamlin. Now he's backed up a little bit, Larry Mack. That's because Jimmy Finning radioed to him a moment ago, we're two laps short, save us some fuel. Wait, so are we, Jimmy? Let me know when you get it figured out here. Need to save us two laps, two laps. Okay, I'll start saving a little bit here, but I don't want to lose the leaders either in case there's a caution. Yeah, and that, that's, you know, a gallon of gas, half gallon, a gallon, gallon and a half, you know, and, and two laps, you think about it, and you say, two laps, I can save you two laps, two laps is four miles, okay, 
four miles. Think about wherever you're sitting in your living room and four miles from where you're at. That's how much fuel he has to save in a car that gets no fuel mileage at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's harder than you think. You know, we saw uh, how, how Keselowski did it a couple of weeks ago. We've seen some stuff. The advantage that he does have is he's starting at the very beginning of the run. So he has the full run to save those two laps, not just the last 10 or 15 laps. I'll tell you, the other guy I think is sitting in the catbird seat is that 27 car. I think Menard, that's a children's car. Those guys have been good on fuel mileage. And he's where he needs to be on track. How about fourth, Paul Menard? That's where he is with 24 laps remaining. It's starting to get really good at Michigan. Twenty laps to go this afternoon in the hell of a good sour cream dips 400 at Michigan. Plenty of storylines in our top ten, so let's go through the field. Brought to you by McDonald's. Chris Neville gets us going. Yeah, and the 99 guys, if they're listening to our coverage, they're definitely going to be happy to hear that the 11's got to save some fuel. I checked in with Bob Osborne. He said they are good to go if this thing goes 200 laps. But a couple minutes ago, he did say, hey, Carl, pull a nice lead, and then if you can, save me some fuel in case we get a green-white checker. Matt? And this is the kind of run that Denny Hamlin needed, still winless in 2011. His best finish came back before the start of summer, second at Richmond. Last year, he was first and second here in Michigan, led 138 laps. Right now, just soldiering on, trying to have a solid day. Marty? Well, we've documented that Matt Kenseth is two laps short on fuel, trying to save some fuel right now. The one thing that might play into his hand a little bit, they are better than everybody here on the longer run, on older tires. And remember, he has tires that are four laps older than everybody else. This might still work out for Matt Kenseth today, Matt. And Paul Menard having a very solid run. His car pretty neutral. Unlike teammate Kevin Harvick, who was too loose and hit the fence, he's been driving smooth. Very good on fuel. This is the kind of run that Paul Menard needed, and he couldn't have done it any better. One of the closest racetracks to his Wisconsin home, Marty. Matt, Tony Stewart's car was a little bit tight all day long. They put a spring rubber in the right rear, and the car absolutely came to life in the second half of this race. Much better. Just checked in with Darian Grubb. He said, we are very close on fuel for making it to the end. If it's a green-white checkered, we do not have enough, Matt. Kyle Busch, good on fuel. The car a little free down in three and four. Good down in one and two. Still one of those racetracks. He would love to put a check mark on his racing resume. Never won here in Sprint Cup. He had issues, got jumbled up in traffic on that last restart and lost track position, Ralph. Jeff Gordon has two wins here, both of which came after he won the previous week's race, just like he did a week ago at Pocono. However, crew chief Alan Gutzison tells me we're extremely close on fuel, Chris. Well, Ryan Newman hasn't scored a top 10 at Michigan in the last 13 races here, but he's been running in the top 10 most of the day. In the middle of the race, they did drop out of the top 10 because of a slow pit stop, but right now the car's in pretty good shape, if anything, a little bit tight. Matt? Steve Addington's race morning concerns came to fruition. The car is absolutely too free. Wrecking loose for Kurt Busch. They've made adjustments every stop. Big adjustments. Still have not been able to get some tightness worked in that race car. He's just trying to hold on for a decent day, Ralph, currently in the ninth position. Greg Biffle's been in the top ten in four of the last five Michigan races. The crew chief, Greg Irwin, tells me that streak could have an issue here today because they're one lap short on fuel. Larry. Well, Ralph, we've got 16 laps to go. Mark Martin in the five car making his 51st start here at Michigan, hanging just outside the top ten. We definitely think he's one of the drivers that can make it to the end of this thing but needs a caution to get caught back up. Right behind him, Clint Boyer in the 33 car, another driver that we feel that can make it. But like Mark Martin, he'll need a caution. Right behind these guys, driver everyone was watching. Third anniversary of his last win. Don't think it's going to happen today. Just a few laps ago, he actually tagged the wall. This is going through turn one and two. Coming up on Mark Martin. And you can hear him roll out the throttle because he saw Mark Martin in the five car squeeze there. they got to run behind you there. One back. And then actually another driver that was running in the top 10, the guy that has three wins so far in 2011, Kevin Harvick. This was about five laps ago through, going through one and two. It has kicked Kevin Harvick, Adam, all the way outside the top 20. He's currently scored in the 21st position, Larry. And I want to say something about Junior. Junior lost that nose when he checked up. It gets up off the racetrack and takes off. 
Carl That's what Edwards. dirty air is. No problems out front. The Fords are holding serve this, after day, this afternoon in Michigan. 31 victories here. Carl Edwards out front right now. And he has been the man that has dominated this racetrack. And we got a caution. Dale Earnhardt Jr. into the wall. It's our sixth caution of the day. And that changes everything again. Yes. Still rolling, Junior? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, it's still gonna... rolling, buddy? I'm rolling. Yeah. Now it's going to come down to the best race car. Junior riding behind Joey Logano. Looks like a cut tire. Looks like a tire. I mean, as quick as it went to the right. Yeah, well, he, already, he had 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 already been damage, in the wall. Yeah. He had already been in the wall with the five car, and I'm betting he had a rub or something because as, as fast as that thing just kind of floated to the right, uh, he, I mean, it, it had to be. Look at he's turning to the left, turning to the left. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, something went down. Something yeah, went down. He saw a five right, right before he hit. Yeah. Yeah, AJ, AJ Allmendinger had just pitted under green. He gets the free pass as Dale Jr. comes in to get some work on the damage. Yeah, just bad, just bad luck for him. He came up on Mark so fast earlier, as you saw in that one replay, and checked up. And when you check up, the nose lifts up off the ground, and the car pushes worse. And that's what happened. He checks up off the, off the gas, nose comes up, he gets in the outside wall. Had to have a tire rubbed. It's it. kind of weird. Right where you're talking right. about, when you lift off the gas, you lose grip on the front. Yes. Doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It makes but no that's sense. What happens. Yeah, it makes no sense at all. But arrow wise, that's how it affects the car. When you talk dirty air, and we talk about it all the time, that's the best way to explain it. Less than 10 laps to go. Carl Edwards, the leader, and they are going to come down pit road. Marty Snyder, what's happening? Well, for Matt Kenseth, he said, I only saved you one lap of fuel, so we're probably going to need a little bit here. Right side tires up half a pound on both of those tires. Car just a little bit tight for Kenseth, and the fuel to make it to the end. Quick stop, Chris. And you can see Carl Edwards hitting the box right now. Team just going to do two right side tires, stab it with fuel. Going to be very short stop, just trying to finish up those tires on the right side. And then Carl down and away. Matt. Mike Ford looking at possibly two tires here. He's looking up pit road. Hamlin is away, just catches the front changer. He's smiling, he's okay. Ralph. Small chassis adjustment, four tires and a whole bunch of fuel into the 24. He's away. Denny Hamlin about took a crew member with him, but he was first off pit road. Kenseth, Edwards, Menard, and Stewart, the top five. We set the running order and get ready for the finish at Michigan when we return. The Fords are holding serve this, after day, this afternoon in Michigan. 31 victories here. Carl Edwards out front right now. And he has been the man that has dominated this racetrack. And we got a caution. Dale Earnhardt Jr. into the wall. It's our sixth caution of the day. And that changes everything again. Yes. Still rolling, Junior? Yeah, buddy. Now it's it still gonna... rolling, buddy? I'm rolling. Yeah. Now it's going to come down to the best race car. Junior riding behind Joey Logano. Looks like a cut tire. Looks like a tire. I mean, as quick as it went to the right. Yeah, well, he already, and he had, had, already been in the wall. Yeah. He had already been in the wall with the five car, and I'm betting he had a rub or something because as, as fast as that thing just kind of floated to the right, uh, he, I mean, it, it had to be. Look at he's turning to the left, turning to the left. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, something went down. Something he, went he, down. He saw a five break right, right before he hit. Yeah. Yeah, AJ, AJ Allmendinger had just pitted under green. He gets the free pass as Dale Jr. comes in to get some work on the damage. Yeah, just bad, just bad luck for him. He came up on Mark so fast earlier, as you saw in that one replay, and checked up. And when you check up, the nose lifts up off the ground, and the car pushes worse. And that's what happened. He checks up off the, off the gas, nose comes up, he gets in the outside wall. Had to have a tire rubbed. It's it. kind of weird. Right where you're talking right. about, when you lift off the gas, you lose grip on the front. Yes. Doesn't, it doesn't make sense, it makes but no that's sense. what happens. Yeah, it makes no sense at all. But arrow-wise, that's how it affects the car. When you talk dirty air, and we talk about it all the time, that's the best way to explain it. Less than 10 laps to go. Carl Edwards the leader, and they are going to come down pit road. 
Marty Snyder, what's happening? Well, for Matt Kenseth, he said, I only saved you one lap of fuel, so we're probably going to need a little bit here. Right side tires up half a pound on both of those tires. Car just a little bit tight for Kenseth, and the fuel to make it to the end. Quick stop, Chris. Yeah, you can see Carl Edwards hitting the box right now. Team just going to do two right side tires, stab it with fuel. Going to be very short stop, just trying to finish up those tires on the right side. And Carl down and away, Matt. Mike Ford looking at possibly two tires here. He's looking up pit road. Hamlin is away, just catches the front changer. He's smiling, he's okay, Ralph. Small chassis adjustment, four tires and a whole bunch of fuel into the 24, he's away. Denny Hamlin about took a crew member with him, but he was first off pit road. Kenseth, Edwards, Menard, and Stewart, the top five. We set the running order and get ready for the finish at Michigan when we return. at Michigan and we just had the final pit stops of the day. Watch Denny Hamlin in the right front. Sometimes it gets physical. It worked out for Denny Hamlin. He's the first off pit road and he's the race leader. When we return, the final lap's coming. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. NASCAR Spring Cup Racing from Michigan International Speedway is brought to you by American Ethanol, American Grown, American Made, powering NASCAR by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Spring Cup Series, by Coca-Cola Classic, open a Coke and enjoy the race, by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance, and by McDonald's, I'm loving it. 
There will be five laps to go when we put the green flag back in the air here at Michigan. Denny Hamlin won this race last season. He's the race leader, and Matt Kenseth, who has had the fastest car today, starts alongside. And, and what you have to do here, you have, you've got five laps to go, and you have to do things that you normally wouldn't do. Yes. You, you, you've got you've to be a lot more aggressive. You've got to take a lot more chances right now because you're out of time, and you've got a lot of good race cars around you, so it may get ugly. Paul Menard, Carl Edwards, Kyle Busch, Tony Stewart make up the front three rows as we put the green flag in the air and settle it in Michigan. Kent has spun the tires big time, which is going to cost him maybe a little bit here. Hamlin's in a good spot up on the outside. They fan out three wide into the corner. That's Carl Edwards going low. Here comes Kyle Busch. And, and the 18 guard, he will do that. He will make something happen. Carl really pushed the 18 or the 17 down in the first corner, but then he got a car up under him, uh, which hurt, or on the outside of him, which hurt. Kyle Busch dominated the middle stages of this race. Wow, Carl really drove down in there, and then his car took a big, big push. But Menard is up on the high side. He's in a good spot right there. And all that racing good for Denny Hamlin, who has the race lead with four laps to go. You know, this is not the best place if you're if you're Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth's car comes in towards the end of a run. Yeah. You get down to a five-lap shootout, he just has to drive. And he said that earlier. We need to get better early in a run. Where he made his biggest gains today when we had those cycles of green flag pit stops and he could really let that car pay dividends on the long run. And, and Paul Menard is doing a great job at fourth of holding off that 99. He, the 99 has tried him of Carl Edwards has tried him high, has tried him low, and Menard just keeps running his line and running his way. And, and this is where it gets really frustrating when you're driving because you're you're driving the car as hard as you've driven it all day long, trying to make four feet on the guy in front of you. You see the top five with two and a half laps remaining here at Michigan. Um, oh. Problems for Regan Smith and worked his way into the top ten after all those issues early oh, in the race. He's got a flat tire. You hear him on the radio. And he had come back from all but being a car lane from being a lap down to being the top ten. Last week at Pocono, Denny Hamlin dominated the first part of the race. But problems late relegated him to 19th in the final finishing order. Denny has been adamant about saying the finishes haven't been great, but I know we have got a race car that can win races. Kenseth is there. Made a lot of Has ground on him right here, so he's going to have to make it happen if he's going to do it. And he's going to have to try to go way up high, maybe, and try to make that high line work. Matt gets that good run through one and two, but Denny and he are kind of a little bit equal through three and four. Regan Smith did get back around and make a pit stop. White flag, flag is out. Down. Denny Hamlin leading. Half back. And it's these two guys right now. Because Kyle is far enough back, he's not going to be a factor. Well, he's going to take a look on the outside. Yeah, he slipped up a little bit. Had to take the shot, though. He, you know, he, he made a run at it. He rolled in on him, and right when he gets to him, you just lose that nose a little bit. Matt Kenseth going to have one more try as they go into turn three. This time he's going to go low. Hamlin washes up the racetrack. Here comes Matt Kenseth to the inside. He cannot make it stick. Oh, Kenseth sideways, and here That's comes Denny Hamlin back. with his Denny first Hamlin. win of 2011 in Michigan. Great job by Mike Ford and Denny Hamlin, those guys, to put themselves in position to take advantage of the clean air. eight races. Many thought he would be a title contender in 2011. It's not been easy. And today, the monkey is officially off their back. 
Denny Hamlin with his first win of the season. And to get it done, he had to hold off Matt Kenseth, who was charging hard in the final lap. Yeah, he, Matt just drove it in there for everything he had. He got, he got loose way, way earlier than what we're looking at right here. He saved it all the way through turn three and, a, and three and a half. Exactly. We've talked about him all day, getting loose and having to feather it on the last lap. You got nothing to lose. And he knew he had to be making that run. Drove, uh, these three guys in that picture right there, the 18, the 11, and the 17, these guys drove hard all day long. Good day for Joe Gibbs Racing. Two of their cars inside the top three. One year ago, Denny Hamlin got his fifth win of the year in this race. Today, he gets his first. The NASCAR on TNT post-race show coming up. Victory Lane, a happy place for one Denny Hamlin. He's a winner today at the Michigan International Speedway. Matt Kenseth, Kyle Busch, Paul Menard, Carl Edwards make up the top five. Let's hear from the runner-up, Ralph. Well, he got his fifth top three here today at Michigan. Matt, you got real close to him, but you just weren't able to get around him. You tried the high side and the bottom side. What was the problem? Well, there's a few things that led up to that, but first, these Crown Royal guys did a great job. I mean, we had a really fast car. I thought we were going to have a shot to win today and got ourselves behind a couple times and um, was able to make that up. And anyway, I got a, I got a bad restart, and um, Carl pushed me back up in there, which was uh, which was real nice of him. And I got back to Denny, but I just I couldn't get around him. We were uh, we were kind of slow for about 10 laps on most runs, and then it seemed like we were the best car from 10 until we needed fuel and just, uh, just didn't have enough time to get around him. I tried everything I could, and I just couldn't uh, figure out how to do it. Adam? Matt Kenseth just missing his third win of the year. Matt Yoakum in victory lane with a man who has got his first. Danny Hamlin survives a late race restart. A last lap dive bomb. What was the biggest game changer for you and this team today? Uh, we just, you know, we, we finished, you know, that's the thing is uh, we got it done and uh, happy for all this team. Uh, they all got sons or daughters and everything, so it's a big Father's Day for all of them. And my dad, Dennis, he uh, paved the way for me to get here, so I can't thank them enough and all the fathers out there. But can't thank this whole FedEx team enough, uh, everyone at uh, FedEx, all the employees. Got, glad to get uh, a win for all of them. Uh, Lori Tucker, Mike Glenn, Fred Smith, the whole group, Alan, uh, just got to thank them. Toyota Sprint, uh, Coke, uh, Gillette, Wiley X, uh, the fans. It's been an amazing, uh, amazing uh, fan base here in Michigan, and uh, everyone from Nike and the Jordan brand can't thank them enough. You've said time and time again how your season usually gets started in April around Martinsville. You took a few extra months. Last year at this time, four wins. You're scoring your first of the season today. What kind of message does this send to the other championship contenders? Well, I think we're, uh, everyone knows that we've been strong. Uh, and, and today we didn't look as strong as what we normally do here, uh, but we, we got it working there at the end. Uh, we made a magic adjustment and just the car took off. So this is the point of the season where we really need to start hitting our stride. And, Hopefully we've got another good 10 weeks uh, before the chase starts. And what a place for Denny Hamlin. Last three races here at MIS, a first, a second, and today a first. But Kyle Busch was third at Pocono. He's third again today. Kyle, great run, but it looked like you got a little bit jumbled up on that restart. Yeah, well, the second to last one we did, you know, uh, I got out a little bit in front of Matt, and I, I didn't spin my tires. I accelerated pretty good. I think Matt spun his tires, so I didn't want to beat him to the line by too much. And... Uh, as soon as I slowed up to not beat him, the herd was coming. So I just had to wait it out and play it out. And it wasn't going to be a great day with that, but uh, we turned it into a pretty good one. We got two tires there on that last three start. We had a good one and uh, drove back up through there. So can't say enough about Dave Rogers and these guys on this Snickers, Snickers M&M's team. You know, they did a great job for me this weekend. And, you know, the 11 team really, really helped us last week. I feel like we helped the 11 a little bit this week. And uh, it just goes to show that we're doing something right. And, um, you know, we're able to share information, which is good. And so... Uh, again, you know, proud of the 11 and uh, great to see him in victory lane and, and beating out the 17. Strong day for Joe Gibbs. Ralph? Pretty good one for the Richard Childers gang, too, over here with Paul Menard. Your first top five finish here at Michigan and also your best finish of the year. This team just keeps picking away at it. What's making the difference? We've had a, we've had a rough month, no doubt about that. The, uh, my guys needed a good run. We've had, uh, we've had fast cars for the most part, just been struggling to put together a full race. Had a 
I wasn't really sure what we had in practice. The car drove good. It seemed like we lacked a bit, little bit of speed, but qualified in top 10, and, and that's so important at these uh, intermediate tracks, track position. And uh, Slugger made a good call, take two tires at the end. Kind of went back and forth, two versus four, but uh, you know, a lot of people took two. We did um, a little bit too tight at the end, but uh, just you know, Pittsburgh Payton, Smith, our Chevy was, was just a really solid weekend, and that's what we needed. A lot of smiles down here, Chris. Well, Carl Edwards was dominant before that last caution, but Carl, you lost two spots in pit lane, and then it looked like you had your hand full on the racetrack once the green came back down. Yeah, I did, and, and congrats to, to Denny, first of all. He, he did a really good job. Their pit crew did a good job. Our guys have been doing well all day. It was just, it's just a, it's so competitive down there on pit road. And then on the restart, Matt spun his tires a little bit, and I thought him and I could still get together and, and run down the back straightaway and do well, but I got to thank Aflac. Uh, Paul Amos had his kids here. They got good grades, so they got to come to the racetrack. And thank Ford, you know, 40 miles per gallon on that focus. We couldn't run out of fuel. I think we had him beat on fuel mileage. But um, I just hope NASCAR takes the opportunity to look at this race and takes the opportunity to change and take downforce away with this 2013 car that's coming. Because track position shouldn't be as important as it is. It'd be nice to race cars instead of downforce. Well, at least it was a good rebound from last weekend. Adam? A nice rebound for Carl Edwards indeed. Six points his advantage coming in. It's now 20. And it's now Kevin Harvick who is in the second position. Dale Jr. remains third. Kyle Busch with a nice gain. And Jimmy Johnson falling down to fifth after his rough day. Guys that make up the chase, Tony Stewart 11th in that first wild card position. Saw Denny Hamlin now inside the top 10 and Jeff Gordon 12th, the final wild card spot. Yeah, you know, we, we, we go deeper, and if we could go deeper, Keselowski that we talked about, uh, Keselowski who we talked about earlier, you look at that, I mean, he's got, he's dependent on Jeff to get up in there, and he, he's dependent on getting in the top 20. And now Denny as well, who yes, picks up exactly. a victory today. Huge. Brad Keselowski finished 25th, and he's got plenty of work to do if he's going to make that win at Kansas, pay off for him, and have a chance to make it into the chase. Dale Earnhardt Jr., a rough afternoon here at Michigan. Marty Snyder caught up with him after the race. Well, a frustrating day for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And uh, what happened there on the contact with your teammate, Dale? Uh, well, I mean, I, I got on the outside of Mark, and he just come on up and drove us in the fence off the corner. Uh, I don't know if his spotter wasn't spotting good or whether he just couldn't see good or what, but uh, just ran and slapped in the wall. I, I don't I don't, know what, I, don't know, I don't know how else to explain it other than that. It, it blowed the right front tire out eventually. Uh, we had got the car pretty good at that point. We're kind of moving forward. But uh, I don't know, man. You know, car went away from us in the middle of the race. And But uh, I guess we can uh, try to get our stuff together and go back the next week and try to see what we can do. At points, does this feel like a top five car to you? And then and that would kind of end the day for you. I never give up. I mean, even at the end, when the when we when the car was beat all to hell, we still wanted to try to get what we could at the end of the race. We tried to get as many spots as we can. Every point's a big deal out there. And I just uh, I try really hard to take care of people. Try not to be careless, and I don't like putting up with carelessness. And that just really pissed me off. What happened out there? So, right. thanks, Junior. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. finished 21st and not too happy about it. Here's the final running order. Hamlin a winner, Kenseth, Kyle Busch, Paul Menard, Carl Edwards, the top five, Landon Castle 12th Yeah, today. we didn't talk about him much good today, but he was, run, there, he was in the top 15 a lot today. That's that a good is run, his man. career best finish. Dale Earnhardt Jr. outside the top 20 for the first time this season. And Biffle, 15th. AJ had a good run going, had to pit there at the end, but Biffle, dominated this race, the first 100 laps. Last week's winner, Jeff Gordon, 17th this afternoon at Michigan. And there you see Brad Keselowski started 41st, worked his way to the front, but issues bring him home 25th. Jimmy Johnson ends up 27th today. Never recovered. There's not enough cautions to recover at a place like this, and he never recovered from that. And Regan Smith didn't get it done either. He had that nice rally, but unfortunately it all went for naught here this afternoon at Michigan. So a little road course racing next week. And I know you two are excited about that. I'll see you in Sonoma, okay? I'm just excited about being in Sonoma. Okay. It's, it's a great place. I'm staying at a different hotel this week <laughs> than you are, so I'm, but I'm really excited about it. I'll find you. <laughs> next Sunday, 
We are going west. It is NASCAR on TNT from Sonova. We go on the air at 2 p.m. Eastern time, followed by Countdown to Green, delivered by Pizza Hut. Then it's the Toyota Save Mart 350. Next, it's the TNT Summer Preview Show. You can go to NASCAR.com for our post-race coverage. For all of us here at NASCAR on TNT, I'm Adam Alexander. Thank you for being with us in the Irish Hills of Michigan, and congratulations to Denny Hamlin. He's a winner today.